So it happened. My Green Bay Packers ended up losing to the Niners 21 to 24 in a very, very competitive game. We're not going to put any blame, but this miss right here pretty much kind of ended uh, our hopes of going to the NFC Championship. Even though the Packers lost, we still won at the same time. Considering all the critics, all people had to say in the presses, in terms of journalism, all that, all those sports shows, they didn't expect us to be here. We sent the Cowboys to Cancun early, and now we're in Cancun. But we weren't even supposed to be in position to be sending people to Cancun and so on and so forth, right? And Packers have a lot to be proud of, you know? Like this guy, Jaden Reed, our lead receiver, had a phenomenal rookie season, you know, as we used him all over the field pretty much, and he was just always clutch. And considering that, you know, he's a rookie, this, he made great plays and was always finding himself open. And then we got Romeo Dobbs here, who just was phenomenal against the Cowboys, was finding himself open, had his career day with six catches, 151 yards, and a touchdown. He's another core piece to this Packers team that we're going to see for years to come. Especially look at this pass right here to Romeo Dobbs in coverage, and it gets all the way down to the 50. This is so amazing to see how consistent he is, especially in his second year, and we have so much to be happy about. Yeah, another young guy like Luke Musgrave comes back from injury, catches his wide open touchdown, and he normally stumbles before getting into the end zone, but this time he did. Not only that, we had our other rookie tight end who showed out, got a touchdown in the divisional round against the Niners. So Packers pretty much have a young core of receivers and tight ends that have a lot to show for these years to come. And so with that being said, we take things over to Madden and kind of, you know, make some moves that I feel like the Packers would do in real life. And let me know if you guys agree with the moves we made down below. So with the draft, the upcoming draft, we end up getting a running back in the first round. So A.J. Dillon is on a contract here. And because of how I feel like A.J. Dillon performed, I didn't think it was really necessary for us to bring him back, especially for a long-term extension. So we ended up getting a running back in the first round. So we ended up moving back to with the Niners because, surprisingly enough, we went 9-8 and eight and we faced the Niners in Divisional, but we ended up losing. Same scenario. But we ended up drafting a running back, 76 overall, in Jonathan Brooks. He's a 6-foot elusive back. He's going to be able to give Aaron Jones some spells and learn from him. And the second pick here, we got a corner. So I feel like Eric Stokes, you know, injury riddled. And we only really have Jair, who was battling injuries, still being able to perform. And then Keyshawn Nixon as our slot guy. But we don't really have that solid guy. I don't have any faith in Eric Stokes, believe it or not. So we didn't even pick up his fifth-year option. So... We ended up get, getting a cornerback from Iowa, not Cooper DeGene, but we got TJ Tampa, 6'2 corner. He's going to have to learn a little bit, but he won't be too bad there. Then we also drafted a center, so I wasn't really too fond with the play of uh, Josh Myers this season. Yeah, he looked okay, but it's a lot of double teams, double team blocks that worked out in his favor. So we drafted Zach Frazier, a guy from West Virginia. He's going to be there to back up, but we're going to see how things play out, who will be better, you know. And then we drafted a safety. So we ended up not re-signing Darnell Savage, even though I don't think we they picked up his fifth-year option in real life. But I have no idea. But we did not re-sign him. And we ended up getting a guy from Oklahoma in the third round, and uh, Billy Bowman. And then the rest of the draft, we after we picked up a backup outside linebacker, we let Simulation do the rest. So we ended up getting a quarterback in Jordan Travis. Uh, nose tackle, tackle, cornerback. Ricky Pearsall, wide receiver, and another running back from Georgia. So that was what the draft class looked like. So this is what the offense looks like. So we ended up cutting David Bakhtiari because I feel like that's the most reasonable thing we could do. We also got $20 million in cap for cutting him. And so this is what the offensive line looks like. So I kind of bumped up some overalls because I felt like this old line deserved it, especially Zach Tom. He had a phenomenal season considering that he got injured against the Niners and that kind of shifted how the momentum was going for our offense. He played really well for the whole year. And Rasheed Walker actually held his own too. So we made him about a 74 running at the left side. And then rest of the old line stays the same. We kept Royce Newman. We kept Sean Ryan. Josh Myers, you guys know what the take, the take is on him. So we drafted his backup. And then quarterback, obviously, Jordan Love. He was an 88, played throughout, simulated through a season, so he's at a 93. 93 is a bit of a stretch, but, hey, that's second year, maybe, I don't know. All right, maybe it's a little bit too much. Maybe in real life it'll be an 87, but morale, boost, and team, all that kind of stuff, so he's at a 93. Aaron Jones is here. He's at an 85, and that rookie we drafted is at a 76, so that's going to be a good combo right there. The receiver core is what I like the most. Jaden Reed's at an 87, which I think is fair. Christian Watson... We still have, we still need to see more from him because those hamstring injuries, I don't know if we need to work on like getting new training staff because 
I don't know, the hamstring injuries have kept Christian Watson down. He's supposed to be the guy, the next guy. So, But nonetheless, we have Romeo Dobbs here, and we have Jaden Reed. So I have full confidence in them. And then we kept Bo Melton, of course. You know, he turned up in the playoffs for us. And then we also kept Don Tavion Wicks. Malik Heath, I don't know what happened to him, but he's gone, Packers fans. So I was looking out for him. We still have Sean Clifford, but I don't know why we drafted Jordan Travis, though. And then moving on, oh, forgot to even show tight ends. So we kept Luke Musgrave and Tucker Kraft. So those are our guys there and that's without a doubt but our defense is with the changes we made so pretty much we um signed the safety into sean elliott we did not keep jonathan owens all those all those cats pretty much but the sean elliott is here along with anthony johnson tj tampa billy bowman jr will be a starting at free safety so we'll make up a scenario like okay we really liked how he performed in the combine at oklahoma and he fits the scheme and you know he's a rookie and so with the d-line we bumped up to Mo Ross. I feel like it was well deserved. I mean, TJ Slant, I like as a Packers fan, watching him play, even though like he wasn't like a huge game changer, the effort was there and the consistency was there by him anytime he was in. And Devontae Wyatt, I feel like towards the later half of the season started performing well too. So, you know, he's there as well. So they're running their ends respectively. And y'all know Kenny Clark. He's a beast. Jair, he's a beast. TJ Tampa, Eric Stokes, you know, we didn't pick up his fifth year option. So this pretty this season's pretty much is all on him to see how he performs because we already got his backup in Tampa. And then, yeah. And the big surprise is that we kept Anders Carlson. I know, I know. It was insane for us to do that we ended up getting a new punter in Braden man we got rid of daniel whelan insane for us for keeping anders carlson after missing those kicks and literally matt lafleur saying that every time he goes out there we just pray that he makes the kick like bro imagine that <laughs> but we put faith in him i mean he's a rookie kicker yes the consistency of kicks was crazy but you guys can fry me in the comments down below but i'm gonna have some faith in him we're gonna see how it plays out with this one season we'll play pro after this whole this whole all these additions were made and we're gonna make sure Keyshawn Nixon still plays at that slot corner I think he fit really well there and so why do they have a random guy playing here so at the slot corner we're gonna obviously just put um Keyshawn Nixon there and then yeah we're gonna sim throughout the season see how it plays and no we did not forget about Carrington Valentine uh he's on the depth chart too he made it past the practice squad or the preseason and so we are gonna be running with six corners new guy being uh, Kyrie Jackson and TJ Tampa so pretty much meaning that Corey Valentine we let go of him and uh, the other corner I believe was David Long so we let go of him as well but TJ Tampa and Kyrie Jackson they have a chance to figure out how the f they'll fit into this mold but still young corner crew honestly oldest being Jair and Keyshawn Nixon so should be interesting to see how this plays out with this group what better to test out this new squad than with the Packers against the Lions the guys who won the division last season so Boom, wide open, Jaden Reed, a dime already, bro. Jordan loves 6 for 6, 66 yards on this drive. We obviously want to hit up Dobbs here, but it'll probably be a Christian Watson touchdown. So let's make things happen. Oh, yeah, easy. What a dime, bro. Perfect placement and everything. That was just way too easy. So we get to take a look at this defense, how we're going to perform against the... Uh, no pass rush, no pass rush. Okay, and we forced the ball out of bounds. Jair was in coverage, so we'll take that. Dude, and it looks like the offense just keeps going down the field to score. We're up 28 to 17, setting the tone. It gave up three points again, but seems like every offensive possession, we're just going down the field and scoring, dude. We got the ball back. We're up 42 to 20. Dude, oh my goodness, bro. We gave up a garbage time touchdown, but it didn't matter. We ended up winning 42 to 28. We set the tone. Jordan Love threw five touchdown passes. Had three, had a 146 pass rating. Jared Goff had three touchdowns, one pick. That what an insane game. Aaron Jones had one touchdown. He fumbled once. That's not good. But our run defense looks like they held its own. Romeo Dobbs went off. Nine catches, 87 yards, two touchdowns. Christian Watson, eight catches, 73 yards, two touchdowns. Jaden Reed, seven catches, 96 yards. Um, we gave up huge chunks of yards to Jamison Williams and Amon Ross St. Brown. But we looked pretty comfortable. And Aiden Hutchinson had two sacks. Pre Preston Smith and Kenny Clark still doing their thing, of course. And Jair Alexander had an interception. So... Overall, great performance. It looks like we're starting off on the right foot. We sim to the middle of the season. Packers are 6-1. We just put up 49 points on the Titans, winning 49-24. to We're facing the Seahawks. So being 6-1, Jordan Love is going off. He's leading in passing yards, 79 completion percentage, 1,800 passing yards, and 27 touchdowns in 7 games. 27 touchdowns in 7 games. I'm not going to say Jordan Love can't do that, but that's insane. 27 touchdowns to two picks, 138 pass rating. All right, he's cracked right now. What? Middle of the season, bro. In seven games, he has seven. 
bro, Romeo Dobbs, 10 touchdowns. Jaden Reed, 7. Luke Musgrave, 3. Uh, Christian Watson, 3 touchdowns. Wow. Um, okay, that's so crazy to see because defense isn't doing anything nearly as special they're middle of the pack so like i guess the offense took it to the next level so maybe i'm a packers fan trying to cope but realistically all right let's be honest that's crazy that's od in seven games 27 touchdowns is a little bit a lot like jordan love must have broken records he's in 96 now so i'm not saying he can't do that but bro that's kind of od like now if jordan love takes it to that level next year in real life hey I'll be the first to say we saw it here in Madden first, but 27 touchdowns, I feel like he broke records. We got to look at the schedule. He must have broke records, like, because 27 touchdowns in seven games is a bit insane. We lost to the Bears? All right, that's wild. So five touchdowns against the Lions, so that's a five touchdown count. Against the against the Bears, he threw two touchdowns and two picks. Okay, so he's at seven touchdowns here. They threw three touchdowns, so he's at 10 touchdowns here. So... 10 touchdowns here and then against the vikings he went off and threw five touchdowns so he has 15 touchdowns total and then against the niners we actually won and he threw two touchdowns so he got his revenge so he's at 17 touchdowns and so over the next two games he threw 10 whoa so against the cardinals he threw four touchdowns oh my gosh so he's gonna throw six against the titans against the titans this man's threw six touchdowns bro he's on one right now he's literally on one so, all right, I'm feeling confident how I perform. Oh, we didn't even look at our kicker. We didn't. We didn't even see how. Actually, no, 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 no. Let's look. Let's look at how Anders Carlson is doing. Pretty much, we gotta see. We gotta see that. We gotta see that kicking. He's missed the field goal. Are you serious? Are you serious, bro? You've had five field goals and you missed an extra point. All right, that got blocked, so that's fair. But you missed the field goal. You've only had five field goals. Your longest was 56. Okay, that's good. But man, come on, dude. Let's be better than that, man. Like, I'm I'm rooting for you. I'm, you know, this is post Packers NFC divisional round loss to the Niners, man. You gotta do better than that. But six and one facing the five and two Seahawks. I have confidence in the squad, so let's go to the playoffs. All right, so we end up going ten and seven, winning the division. I'd expect them to fare a little bit better, but nonetheless, we face the Niners, so we get a rematch against them. And Jordan Love doesn't seem to be top anymore. We we're finished six. So he had 20. Look at how Madden works. He had 27 touchdowns when we were at the middle of the season. Now he's only at 34. 34 touchdowns, four picks. Oh, and he got injured and our backup came into play. So, okay, that kind of makes sense then. 34 touchdowns, four picks, 125 pass rating, 75 completion percentage. Only got sacked 15 times. Aaron Jones took off. He had another phenomenal year. He's fumbled six times though. Damn. <laughs> 14 touchdowns though on the year. Receiving, Jaden Reed had 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs was too shy away from 13 touchdowns. Luke Musgrave, Christian Watson all did their thing. And I oh, can't complain with that. Defense. So defense finished about 23rd. Kenny Clark led the team in sacks. So I want more from our guys. I definitely want more from them. Jair had four picks, so he had a stellar year, of course. And, yeah, so can't complain. We got to also see how Anders Carlson did with the new – with getting – a chance to stick with us right so kicking he missed two field goals as long as it was 57 he missed two extra points one was blocked so he was 83 percent on the year uh you know just even just him even missing just makes it like so stressful but we faced the niners who were nine and eight we gotta see how this plays out obviously all right, so our offense has the ball. Looks like we only put up three, so Anders hits a kick, but our defense gives up a touchdown, and fourth down alert, we do nothing. So we get the ball back. The game's tied 3-7. This is the playoffs, man, but, oh, bro, two-minute drill. Jordan, wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second. We're down 17-3. to three. Can we cancel Sim for a second? Can we cancel Sim for a second? I got to look at the depth chart. Is Jordan Love injured? Oh, my gosh. Jordan Love is injured. No wonder. No wonder. Okay, so we lost Jordan Love to a season-ending injury, and that made Jordan Travis be the starter. So there's no... I mean, we made the playoffs, yes. But that... Oh, wow. So pretty much this isn't legit because we've only... We're going to get spanked by the Niners because we lost our quarterback. And we can't even score a test. Oh, we did. We got to stop. Oh, let's see if the offense could do something here. Fourth down alert. They actually get it. They, whoa, kind of back in the game, low key, and now uh, we ended up losing 24 to 17. So another heartbreak. Niners own us. <laughs> Niners own us. 
Even Sean Clifford came in. <laughs> Even Sean Clifford came in. But Jordan Travis did not. Well, Brock Purdy torched us. Aaron, uh, Christian McCaffrey went off, of course. Running, We did the best we could with an injured crew. And Brandon Ayuk ate all over us with eight catches, 149 yards, and two touchdowns. Defense, Nick Bosa had a sack, of course. And wow. So, and realistically, Jordan Love probably would have beat the Niners considering we, we were competing with a backup quarterback. But that's tough. But I have faith in the Packers doing way better than they did this past year. I mean, they did pretty well for what it was worth for a rebuilding year. So if you guys have any thoughts on how you think it would play out, let me know in the comments down below. And remember, you got to be a fiend to succeed. Peace.